नमस्ते सभी को सेशन में एक बार फिर से जुड़ने के लिए आ, मेरा सह धन्यवाद आप लोगों के लिए एक अनाउंसमेंट है कल दोपहर दो बजे कल इट मीन्स एट ऑफ द अगस्त दोपहर दो बजे से यूजी स्टूडेंट्स का पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन कंपटीशन होगा तो जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स इसमें पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं कंपटीशन में वो दो बजे से जो है वो ज्वाइन हो जाए थैंक यू अब हम साइंटिफिक सेशन फोर जो है वो स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं इसका टाइटल जो है वो इंटीग्रेटेड लर्निंग ऑफ त्रिदोष या प्रैक्टिकल अप्रोच है हमारे साइंटिफिक सेशन के रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर विनोद कुमार एम वी सर हैं विनोद सर प्रोफेसर इन एच ओ डी हैं डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ संहिता संस्कृत एंड सिद्धांता वी पी एस वी आयुर्वेदा कॉलेज कॉटकल कंप्लीटेड यू जी फ्रॉम वी पी एस वी कॉटकल पी जी इन मौलिक सिद्धांत गवर्नमेंट आयुर्वेदा कॉलेज टी वी एम पी एच डी फ्रॉम तिलक महाराष्ट्र विद्यापीठ पुणे सर की एक्सपर्टीज एरिया है टीचिंग ऑफ बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ आयुर्वेदा इंडियन फिलासफी साइकोलॉजी काउंसलिंग एंड योगा टीचिंग मैथडोलॉजी एजुकेशनल रिसर्च इन आयुर्वेदा रिसर्च मैथडोलॉजी हिज ऑल्सो चेयरमैन बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज आयुर्वेदा यू जी प्री क्लिनिकल केरला यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हेल्थ साइंसिस फैकल्टी ऑफ आयुर्वेदा मेंबर अकेडमिक काउंसलिंग काउंसिल बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज ए यू एच एस ही हैज चेयर एंड कंडक्टेड मैनी सेमिनार्स सी एम ई ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम फॉर आयुर्वेदा डॉक्टर्स एंड हैज अ स्पेशल एक्सपर्टाइज इन द फील्ड ऑफ आयुर्वेदा साइकोथेरेपी ही हैज पब्लिश मोर देन टू फिफ्टी पेपर्स एंड हैज ऑथर्ड फोर बुक्स एंड हैज हेल्ड मैनी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव अकेडमिक एडिटोरियल पोस्ट एट यूनिवर्सिटी लेवल मैं विनोद कुमार सर को जो है वो इन्वाइट करूंगी सर प्लीज आप सेशन जो है वो स्टार्ट करें Good evening, all. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, sorry for not speaking in Hindi because I am not that much fluent in Hindi. I think all of you can follow English. Okay. Uh, yes, thank sir. You for, Language uh, has no bars. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. so i am very much thankful to the organizers for inviting me for this precious session and i i presume that uh, the audience belongs to different categories like uh, some of you are students some of you are pgs phd scholars and all today the discussion topic is a little bit different from what is going on because it is regarding how to learn tridosh it's not uh, how to practice tridosha uh, the theoretical aspects of tridosha nothing like that it's uh, about how to learn tridosha especially uh, learning tridosha as a task for a beginner learner in ayurveda because i am uh, from the department of samhita siddhanta and uh, teachers like me uh, find it very difficult to give the idea of tridosha give the idea of tridosha in a holistic way to the students who are admitted to first bs so uh, keep your mind like uh, uh, as as you uh, ad, uh, you were admitted in first first bs in your ug studies uh, and be receptive like what will happen in those classes and imagine your memories or take your memories go through your memories how did you deal with the tridosha siddhanta in your ug classes something like that so it will be it will be benefiting to those who are who want to become teachers not practitioners but the understanding of tridosha will be equally important uh, for teachers and practitioners so it will be something like that okay i will um, share my slides now One second.
Hope the slides are visible. Is that visible? Yes, sir. Yes. So is it moving? It is moving, no? Slides? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. So uh, uh, the next 40 hours, I don't, I don't know whether I can complete the whole things in the 40, 40 minutes. Anyway, we, we are having some uh, time for discussion also. So uh, uh, the topic is related to integrated learning of Tridosha, uh, a practical approach. Okay. So we need to have some idea about what is the background of this uh, paper or what is the background of learning Ayurveda, learning in learning Tridosha. So there are some, there are some areas which need some clarifications at this point. One is naturally the basic, what is the basic problem encountered by a beginner learner in Ayurveda? Because we are going to teach Tridosha Siddhanta to a beginner learner. So what is the actual problem there? So that is one thing. Second thing is what is meant by transition curriculum? Nowadays, this term is very popular in Ayurveda because uh, NCISM has introduced a transition curriculum for first BIMS students. So what does that mean? How can we uh, envisage Tridosha Siddhanta, the learning of Tridosha Siddhanta as a part of a transition curriculum? What is meant by transition curriculum? Transition curriculum is a, is a curriculum which enables a student from their lower grade of knowledge to a higher grade of knowledge. Here, lower grade of knowledge means uh, people are having zero knowledge about Ayurveda, about Tridosha Siddhanta. Definitely, they have to be transited. They have, they have to be uplifted to the knowledge system of Ayurveda, whether it is possible through Tridosha or not, is, is our uh, thought, the, the subject of thought here. So that is why transition curriculum becomes an important part. Because we have to think about whether um, uh, Tridosha Siddhanta can be a basic model for setting a transition curriculum in the beginning of a course. So that is so so that that concept is very important. So the importance of preclinical learning is this the third thing. What is meant by preclinical learning? Ayurveda is a clinical uh, discipline. Tridosha itself is a clinical discipline. But what is, what is meant by preclinical regarding Tridosha Siddhanta means whether we have to introduce Tridosha Siddhanta in a preclinical setting. Preclinical setting, you, you, you are not going to that directly to the clinical setting, whether a preparatory uh, phase should be there for learning Tridosha Siddhanta prior to experiencing Tridosha Siddhanta in a clinical setting. Always we are arguing for uh, pre, means early exposure to clinics. Okay. The first year so now it is now it is there in the curriculum for first year students themselves are going to clinics and experiencing all those all those things but whether there is some problem in directly exposing students to learn tridosha in a clinical setting or not so what is the nature of preclinical learning uh, learning in the case of ayurveda that should be clearly defined while we are going to learn about the, how to how to teach tridosha siddhanta so that is one point of discussion there should be a perspective change, no doubt, because they are coming to a new paradigm. It is not a new science. Ayurveda is not a new science to them. For example, uh, people learning physics, when they want to learn biology, there is, a, there is a shift from one discipline to another, one science to another, because physics is different from biology. But totally, physics and biology are occupying in a single paradigm. That is the paradigm of modern science, modern science. For example, mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, biotechnology, biochemistry, physiology, everything is set up in a, in a single paradigm. Okay, so the paradigm of Ayurveda is different from that paradigm. So it is not a simply another science, but it is, it is, it is another paradigm. Paradigm means uh, the, the, there is a difference in thought process. So physics and biology, physics and chemistry, that they can be in the same uh, paradigm, even though they are different sciences. But Ayurveda is out of this paradigm. So there should be a paradigm shift. Paradigm means a, a way in which you are thinking about things. So it is a framework of thought. So there should be a perspective change for that. So how to build up a perspective change by learning Tridosha? That is another point of discussion. 
And last, finally, there should be what is meant by constructivist learning. Constructivist learning means you are learning by constructing some ideas. It is not something like teaching something. Teaching and learning are totally different things. What is the difference between teaching and learning? The teaching, there should be a teacher, but learning means teacher will be there, environment will be there, settings will be there, you are so many um, resources will be there. From all those resources, you are learning something by yourself. Constructivist learning means you are learning by yourself, constructing some ideas. It can be from the class. Some of the ideas from the can be from the class. Some other, other ideas can be from the clinics. Some other from the society. Some other from your family or even the nature or from your kitchen. Our subjects are like that. From where you can learn the dinajarya, it, it, it is not necessarily it is not from the classroom. Classroom you can learn some slokas. But actual learning of Dhinajarya happens outside the classroom. So that is a real process of learning. So whether you can take Tridosha learning outside the classroom or even outside the campus, such a type of learning is called a constructivist learning. We are putting some ideas in the mind of the student and they, they construct their own learning about the Tridosha. It need not be about the Tridosha only. Any idea like Sastavruta can be there. Agni concept can be there. Any concept in Ayurveda can be learned in a constructive way. So the teachers are becoming the, they are not actually teachers. The teachers are becoming uh, what is called a facilitator. Facilitator of imbibing some basic ideas and they whether they themselves can construct some better ideas or some bigger ideas or so more, more pro proliferated ideas on the background of what the teacher had offered in the class. So such a type of learning is called constructivist learning. So actually, um, my um, PhD thesis was regarding the teaching learning process of Tridosha Siddhanta. I have considered all these points while uh, designing a new model for learning Tridosha Siddhanta. So that is what we are going to discuss. Again, going to the basic problem. What is the basic problem? As you all know, you, we all experience this problem that you are in an ex, you are having some existing ideas. That those ideas are related to a particular paradigm of physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, and all. And some new ideas comes uh, come in the classroom of Ayurveda, BAMS learning. New, new ideas come. Definitely, there is a process called the cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance means a disturbance, a disturbance in your what is called a framework. There is a, it was in equilibrium. Your ideas were, uh, were in equilibrium. So when a new idea comes to anybody, it, is, it need not be regarding Ayurveda. It can be any new knowledge. Coming to a, the mind of a child, there will be cognitive dissonance. How to deal with this dissonance is the, uh, the, the, the point which we have to discuss. How to deal with this dissonance. Everywhere it is there. Whenever you learn something new, definitely, there should be a, a cognitive dissonance. In the case of Tridosha also it is there. In the case of Ayurveda it is there. But how to deal with this uh, cognitive dissonance is, the, is another thing. So there are two ways. There are two ways to deal with this dissonance. So there was an equilibrium of physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics in the, in the brain of you know, the child, the, the students. So suddenly the ideas in Ayurveda comes there leading to cognitive dissonance. There are two methods. It is not explained by my, me. It was a concept by, you can call him as a, uh, as a, as a developmental psychologist called Jean, Jean Piaget. You can see the photograph of uh, Piaget in the previous slide. It is the Jean Piaget theory of cognitive development. So he explained that this uh, phenomenon in two ways. How can you, how can you, cooperate with this or how can you contain this cognitive dissonance? There can be two methods. One is called assimilation. Assimilation means elimination of the dissonance by assimilating information into the existing schema. Schema means whatever you know. Schema means the framework uh, in which you are already. For example, uh, people coming to learn Ayurveda, they are having a schema of physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics. That is a schema or it can be called a paradigm. So you, you, whenever a new thing comes there, for example, Tridosha Siddhanta is there, they try to assimilate it, they try to um, absorb it, information, in, uh, the, those information into the existing Shima. That is why people are very interested in why we say Vata is like Vata is movement, 
or vata is the nervous system or pitta is the digestive system kapha is a, the growth and development of your body or some uh, reproductive system or something like that. when you compare these things into the systems uh, they very well understand because that is a process of assimilation because all those things they already know what is meant by reproductive system what is meant by growth what is meant by movement what is meant by nervous system all, all those things are familiar with them so such a process process is called assimilation as teachers we are trying to assimilate things we are trying to bring out assimilation to them that is the easiest method to um, deal with this problem but what happens there is by assimilation uh, they are not going to grow to some 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 other levels we are they are not uh, um, they are not accommodating things accommodation means elimination of dissonance by revising the existing schema to accommodate new knowledge they have to revise their schema they have to revise their paradigm they have to make a bigger bigger paradigm or bigger schema to accommodate the new things so that is the ultimate aim you can start with assimilation but the ultimate aim should be accommodation that means you have to reframe their thought process so, so how can you make this reframing in the case of tridosha siddhanta so there you will you will be reaching in a new equilibrium larger and more comprehensive understanding uh, that means they uh, they can uh, understand things in the new language so that is like uh, this accommodation is something like uh, learning a new language because language is you can deal with everything with this language for example if you uh, you can say the guna guna lang guna language is a language there is a shema guna perspective or padartha perspective means padartha language you can speak things uh, regarding the same thing what is what is there already the same thing you whether you can learn with the with the padartha language or guna language dravya guna karma language or something like that so that is the thing which we have to do so how to bring out accommodation process or how to initiate accommodation process is the simplest definition of how to learn tridosha siddha okay hope that is clear so as i already mentioned the uh, transition curriculum is there or should be like a paradigm shift shifting uh, lifting a stranger to a different paradigm in thought process so that is what we need to inculcate by learning tridosha siddhanta the usual definition of preclinical learning will be anatomy biochemistry physiology or whatever it may be but in our case it is somewhat complicated because uh, anatomy physiology uh, biochemistry all those things are not new to them so they are continuing they are in continue continuance with whatever they have already learned but in the case of ayurveda the preclinical learning is somewhat different from where they have to start observing things is the important thing for example when they are coming to medicine mbbs they learn anatomy physiology which is in continuation with the zoology botany or something like that the already genetics is there already everything it is only a, a just a higher higher level continuation of what they have already learned but here the problem is different so we have to be careful in designing the preclinical learning of uh, tridosha or preclinical learning of ayurveda so how to make this bridging with the tridosha is the problem so uh, what i come what i want to communicate is all these problems are there when we have we are, we are designing a, a new model teaching learning model for tridosha siddhanta preclinical learning of ayurveda should be nature based because already they are having a notion of nature in them already they learned the nature in the language of physics chemistry biology botany all those things but whatever is there outside them in the nature we have to learn in a different language so should be should widen their perspective and should transit from preoccupied perspectives and should be related to real life situations also so when you teach tridosha or whatever is there without having a real life experience it is very difficult to bring out the accommodation because they uh, should develop a, a sense of necessity sense of necessity that it is there in our surroundings so you have to go to the surroundings you have to go to the nature before going to human beings so start from nature then come to human beings and then only you can go to clinics so there are three steps one is learning from nature second is learning in normal human human beings and third thing only will be there in learning clinics so in the case of ayurveda preclinical learning again will be divided into two that is one is the learning from the nature 
and second stage only you are going to learn in human beings so that is the difference of preclinical learning uh, in ayurveda when compared to the other medical systems especially modern medical system i hope that is clear you can point out you can raise some queries we will discuss it later on the discussion part then and there you can put the queries there i will be discussing it later so that is the last line environmental than clinical environmental than clinical so i am i'm rushing through the slides somewhat time will be lesser the new process will be something like learning unlearning and relearning whatever is learned it is not unnecessary it is it is not unnecessary all of the all all those things are necessary but you have to unlearn those things and relearn things and uh, there should be a perspective change padartha vijnana is the subject which make which inculcate the perspective changing so tridosha should be learned from a padartha perspective and again i have already discussed about what is meant by constructive learning that means they themselves are going to construct the idea of tridosha siddha okay so learning itself the process of learning itself is in transition it's not regarding ayurveda only all over the world in any discipline learning is in a transition learning process is in a transition so the transition is marked by this like uh, these statements like uh, known to unknown means when when you think about tridosha i have to start from known things because what happens in our classrooms is all to all of a sudden we are introducing tridosha siddhanta nothing is known there so that is not a, a, a better way of a learning in a learning process because it should be something should be made them known or whatever they know we have to identify something from uh, those known things and then we have to go to unknown simple to complex it is it is very clear simple to complex analyze to synthesize analyze to synthesize means they have to make an analytical uh, like uh, an, a thought process in the classroom or whatever it may be and later on they need to synthesize what happens in our classes will be we synthesized something and we are pouring on to the students they are not getting a something called uh, uh, analyzing things there so tridosha siddhanta should be uh, introduced in a way in, in way that they need to analyze something they have to derive in some conclusions and they have to synthesize something with the help of the teachers so whether it is possible or not is the another thing specific to general generalization comes from that is called the inductive method examples will be given finally they will be reaching into final conclusion empirical to rational empirical means what you have experience so experience to anumana what whatever in our language it will be from pratyaksha to anumana empirical means pratyaksha anumana means they have to come into their own inferences with the help of the teachers so it should be empirical to rational induction to deduction induction means uh, viewing specific things or individual things and later on coming on to the generalization is called induction so first should be like that they have to generalize they have to learn to generalize things then only they can go to deduction a clinical phase it is more deductive for example vada pitta kapha is there so you have you learnt about the vada pitta and kapha in a holistic way in the clinics it should be whether it is vada whether it is pitta whether it is uh, vruddhi or shaya whether it is combination whether it is uh, the taradama taradamya is there whether uh, what type of combination is there all those things are uh, in a deductive approach means you are going from general to specific so that is so the initial thing should be induction then in a clinical phase you can go to deductive reason psychological to logical means psychological means they themselves should feel it psychologically fitting to them that is the that is the theory of what is called accommodation because they themselves feel that they they should have a feeling that is called affective domain in the in the, in the language of teaching methodology affective domain means they have to find themselves important or all these things are important they have to appreciate those importance that will be that will make them psychologically calming down then only you have, you need to go to the logical part of that that thing so appreciating the importance of those things we have to tell some examples we have to tell uh, take them to some case history uh, narrating some cases uh, direct, not directly going into the clinics but narrating some cases some examples some videos or some experience sharing something like that that should, uh, there should be psychological to logical actual to representative we have to show the actual things and then we, we need to go to the representative part nearer things should be 
addressed initially. You need to, uh, nearer thing means in the classroom, if you can apply Tridosha Siddhanta in the classroom itself, that is very near. Need not go to the far things. That is a patient. I, I, I was a patient for uh, some stories which happened long longer back. Not, 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 nothing something like that. When you learn about Prakruti, in the classroom itself, you can learn these things. That is the nearest thing. Or they can learn things, if they can learn things from their family, that is the nearest thing. If they can uh, learn things from, uh, um, from a place where they usually visit, something like a canteen, somewhere something like a, uh, your library or something like that. So that is a nearer place. Then only you can go to some faraway places, faraway examples, um, uh, something like that. So that is the concept of nearer to far. All these things should be put in your mind where, while you are uh, teaching Tridosha Siddhanta. So the methodology of developing a theory in Ayurveda should be kept in mind. So there will be some observations. And we, we always be place this observation in a universal perspective. Even when you learn about Tridosha, we are not directly going into Tridosha. We put it in a universal perspective. We have Loga Purusha Samya Siddhanta. So we are going to explain that Visargada and Vikshe Paihi Surya Soma. There is some symbolic expressions are there. So whatever Panjabhuda Siddhanta is there, all those things, Samayana Vishaya Siddhanta, Panjabhuda Siddhanta, Loka Purusha Samya Siddhanta, Kairi Garana Siddhanta, all those things are equally applicable to the universe as in the human beings. So we are putting it is not that we are not introducing something in human beings as such. We are going to introduce those things in a universal perspective, which can be seen a, everywhere in the world. So that is the importance of Loga Purusha Samya. So Tridosha Siddhanta also you have to introduce in that way. How it is uh, understood in the nature, then you can, because they are very much um, engaged with the nature. They are very much engaged with the nature. So if you can uh, engage them in the nature about Tridosha Siddhanta, something about Tridosha Siddhanta, and then come into human body, and then go into the patients, and then go into the treatment, that will be a very good transition from there, from where they are, from where they are to the theory of Tridosha uh, Siddhanta. And this is the thing, perspective change starts from placing a universal perspective. Okay. So where you have to place all these things, we have already discussed many things, and you have to place Tridosha to bring out perspective change, to learn as a part of a preclinical learning, to practice a constructive learning, to address co cognitive issues, and to make a smooth transition. So with the same theory of Tridosha, you can, whether you can make all these changes together. So that is the thing which I have tried through my model. And another question is, from where can you enter Tridosha? Okay, so, so there is a Padartha perspective of, for Tridosha. There is a genomic perspective. Higher genomics is there regarding the studies related to genomics and Prakriti and all. So that, that can be an entry point to Tridosha. Where you're dealing with people, when, if there are some, some researches going on, like higher biology or higher genomics, something like that, they'll be much interested about what, what happens in genomics. And that, that can be connected with Tridosha. So that is one entry point. There is a biology perspective. Biology perspective means uh, whether Tridosha can be represented as a difference between a, a living organism and non-living organism. Whether the, the features of uh, living organism that can be a single-celled uh, creature like amoeba up to the human beings, whether the basic things happening in one cell or amoeba or human beings can be translated to what is called the Tridosha, whether Tridosha has a role in those activities. So that is the biological perspective of learning Tridosha. We have tried for that also. Binary perspective means uh, uh, we explain gunas in opposite pairs. So uh, Vata is Sita and uh, Pitta is uh, Pitta is Ushna. So that is a binary. Pitta, Vata is Ruksha, but uh, Kapha is Nikta. That is a binary. So whether you can make some connections in between this uh, doshas in a binary point of view. So that is one point of entry. Adaptability perspective means uh, wherever there is a there is a there is a compensative mechanism among three doshas. Because one is Sita uh, and the other is Ushna, there is a compensative mechanism. So whatever changes happening in the nature, the corresponding changes, changes happening in your body, but the counter mechanism also is there in your body. For example, when 
whenever you um, are exposed to heat, there is a chance of increasing pitta in your body. But there is a counter mechanism in your body that is sweating. So other doshas or vada or kapha, what is participating there? So there is a there is this is called adaptability. You are adaptive to the nature means that adaptability is brought about by uh, tridoshas in your body because these are dynamically dynamic equilibrium is there uh, between tridoshas. So that is another perspective. Uh, I'm not saying all this perspective can be suitable for a beginner learner. Biology perspective will be suitable for a beginner learner. Then genomic perspective can be suitable for a beginner learner because they are exposed to genomics and uh, Symbolic perspective means uh, uh, we are symbolizing Vada Pitta Kapha like uh, Sarga Adana Vikshepam. So we are, we are symbolizing Sarga Adana Vikshepam in, in the human body. So such a perspective also is there. There can be many more perspectives. So uh, you can enter to Tridosha in one of these perspectives. The Padartha perspective means uh, uh, take Tridosha as a Dravya and to, it has some gunas and it has some activities, some karmas. And Samayana Vishesha Siddhanta will be acting on Tridosha. Finally, Samava is there. So that is a, uh, when Padartha Vitnana, they are well versed with the Padartha Vitnana. You can introduce this Tridosha in a Padartha Vitnana perspective. So that will be easier uh, when, uh, when a student has already been, uh, has already completed the learning of Padartha. Okay. <clears throat> so, so there are Logapurusha. So Tridosha. Uh, complies with the, almost all the basic theories in Ayurveda. Tridosha complies with the Logopurusha Samya because whatever happens in the universe it repeats, repeats in our body. It complies with the Gairi Gairana Siddhanta. It complies with the Samanya Vishya Siddhanta. It complies with the Pandyabuddha Siddhanta. So the same thing. That is why if you learn Tridosha properly, all these theories will be will become the Adhigarana Siddhanta. Adhigarana Siddhanta means uh, when you learn a Siddhanta, uh, some other Siddhantas come into that context. That means if you learn Tridosha Siddhanta, uh, the, the, all other theories like Loga Purusha, you cannot teach Tridosha Siddhanta without teaching Loga Purusha, without teaching Kairya Karana, without uh, learning Samayana Vishesha or without learning Panchaputta. That means if you learn Tridosha properly, that complies with that, satisfies the learning of Loga Purusha, Kairi, but we can we cannot uh, suggest those terms there. You cannot suggest those terms. You cannot use the uh, the term like it is Loga Purusha Swami Siddhanta, but the idea will be there. You cannot escape from those ideas. So that is why it is uh, like all in a single theory. Tridosha Siddhanta can be all in a single theory. Okay. Because multiple influences influences uh, our uh, human body is uh, uh, exposed to multiple influences, environmental influence, geographical peculiarities, climate, food, lifestyle factors, relationship, everything. We can explain Tridosha in, in terms of all those things. You can explain Tridosha, the influence of Tridosha on environment, or environment the influence of environment on Tridosha. That is the uh, Kalam, Desham, etc. Geographical peculiarities, Desham, climate, food, uh, life, all those, all those are influencing Tridosha. So that means uh, that Tridosha Siddhanta complies with the multiple influences. I hope that is clear. What all are the Tridosha expressions in your body? Physical characteristics are there, like in Prakriti. Genetic expressions are there, as we have already ex explained. Biological dynamics is there because Tridosha is in a, is in a, is in a dynamic equilibrium. So biological dy dynamics is there. Tridosha can be taken as a base of the personality that is Prakruti. And uh, likes and dislikes, behavior, vulnerability, as in the case of Prakruti. Because so who is vulnerable for a Vatika type of disease or who is vulnerable for overheating or vulnerability can be explained. Who is Vulnerable uh, at what age is vulnerable for degenerative diseases. So all those things are connected with the Tridosha. Homeostasis, you can explain Tridosha Samya as homeostasis. Self-regulation mechanism is there. For example, Vata is uh, uh, Sita or Vata is Ruksha. Tatra Ruksha, Laku, Sita, Khara, Soshma, Sala, Anila. So Ruksha is there. Then uh, Chala is there, Sukshma is there. All those properties of Vata are regulated by the Sita property. Because usually what happens is which is Sukshma, which 
with this lagu, with this ruksha, there is a normal tendency to become ushna. Because ruksha, sita, sukshma, all those chala, all those properties are usually, in a physical manner, usually it is uh, uh, combined with, naturally combined with ushna, ushna guna. But vada is sita. That means it prevents all these other properties like ruksha, sukshma, etc. to uh, it prevents from the overactivity of those gunas like ruksha, sukshma, etc. Hope that is clear. That means vata having a self-regulating mechanism within itself. Pitta is having a self-regulating mechanism within itself because pitta is sukshna and tikshna. And if pitta becomes ruksha, that is highly destructive to your body. So there is a controlling mechanism within pitta that is it becomes that is why it becomes snigdha when usna and snigdha combines naturally it will be drava when snigdha and usna combines that it naturally it will be sara so all those properties are with the combination of usna and snigdha so snigdha becomes protective to usna so that is the regulatory mechanism within pitta so all these things are expressions of the dosha now I'm moving on to the second part of my presentation. So almost time is over. I will rush to, uh, through my slides. That is uh, uh, keeping all, all these things. I, I hope all those things are clear. Keeping all these things in your mind, we, we need to go to the uh, next part. That is uh, how to develop a learning practice, teaching learning process in uh, teaching Tridosha Siddhanta. That, that was my PhD, PhD study. So I will explain what happened there. Uh, structuring the learning process, we we need to start from changing the perspective. We have already mentioned that we have to we need to start from changing the perspective. Second one, we try to because changing the perspective means you have to use another language. So, what will be the language most suitable to express tridosha? We Within our discussions with my guide, with, uh, with my other things, some focus group discussions were there. And finally, we decided that language of guna is the most important thing which you can place as a background. It is not uh, introducing Tridosha freshly. You introduce guna there. Two discussions were there. Whether we have to start uh, from Prakriti as a background. Prakriti, that is means our personality traits, Vada Prakriti, Pitta Prakriti, Kapha Prakriti. So that is one way. Uh, we have already discussed that there is different ways to Tridosha. So entering through Prakriti is one method of entering to Tridosha. But in the discussions, it came that the Guna perspective will be the most important background through which you can learn Tridosha. Because Guna applies to everything. Guna applies to everything. So that was furnishing the background. That was the phase two. So after changing the perspective, what, what change is needed in perspective? That means you have to uh, have to develop uh, a language of guna or think in the perspective of guna. So that was the second phase, furnishing background knowledge that is guna spectrum, introducing guna spectrum to view nature and human body because guna, you can explain almost everything in terms of guna. So then, then it will be very easy to to make an accommodation. When you uh, bring uh, bring up uh, a guna perspective, a guna shima in the mind of the student, it will be very easy to put the tridosha there. So that is why guna was um, learned initially. And uh, uh, identifying the trilogy. Trilogy means visarga, adha, and vikshepa. On one side, it is guna. On the other side, they developed an exercise like how to identify visarga, adha, and vikshepa. It was done in the classroom as a classroom discussion. They can observe things and identify what is called. There will be some constructive changes that is called visarga. There will be some destructive changes that is called uh, adana. And there should be a combination in between. There should be a regulator in between. So what happens in your body? There are so many constructive things that represents visarga. There are some uh, disintegrated mechanism, dis integrative mechanisms, reduction reduction mechanism in your body. So all those things come under adana. There should be a balance in between. There should be a combination. That is, there should be a harmonious uh, uh, equilibrium in between. There should be somebody to make a balance in them or doing things to make a balance. So, so likewise, Visarga Adana Vikshepa frame you can make everything. For example, if you make a sambar or if you make an idli in your kitchen, that also Visarga Adana Vikshepa is there. How it is there? 
you have to break down something for preparing um, idli. That is, you have, you have rice in, uh, with you, so you have to break down. So that represents the destructive process that is uh, similar to the Adana process. Then you have to construct something. You have to pour it on an, in a particular shape. You have to make something new by, uh, again, that is called Visarga. Visarga means uh, it's, a, it's a constructive process. So with, with many examples, many examples uh, which are there in the surroundings. For example, you are constructing a house. Imagine hundreds of examples are constructing a house. What is the vikshepa? What is the uh, uh, adana there? What is the destructive process there? What is the constructive process there? What is the uh, vikshepa? Vikshepa means the coordinate. So for making uh, idli, there should be a cook to make things, moving things from here and there or something like that. So there should be a carpenter there for constructing a house. So you can have any number of examples where Visarga, Adana, Vikshaya are there. You can have any number of examples where it explains the guna spectrum, like Ushnam, Sitam, Sthiram, Chalam, all those things are there. So this is the background. So by, by bringing out this background, naturally in the next step, you can directly go to construct what is called a Tridosha. So the, in the third phase, there is an introduction of the concept that is Tridosha. So Tridosha in biological perspective and bringing out etymological derivations of and concept of health and disease, something like that, that was the third phase. And establishing connections between concepts, that is on, on one side, Guna perspective is there. On the other side, uh, Tridosha perspective is there. You can connect them. At that point only, we will learn like Tatra Ruksho Laku Siddha Khara Sushma Sala Anilaha. So it is in the fourth phase. But in our textbook, it, is, it comes in the first chapter or it is introduced as in the terms of guna because why it comes the, the term, the guna, the comes in the initial part of our textbook like Ashtanga Hridayam. Why it is like that? It is like that because guna spectrum is already there for students which who comes to learn Ayurveda at that time because Darsana is there. Already they have learned Darsana. So they know what is meant by Guna. The, they know what is Ruksha. They know, but now our students, they don't know. So that is the difference. So that is called the paradigm shift. So uh, one who is familiar with Guna, you can directly go to explain Guna in the first chapter itself. But in our case, it is in the fourth phase only because they don't know at all about Gunas. So that is why uh, in the fourth phase only, we are explaining what is called uh, what uh, what are the gunas of dosha? Finally, we are going to reinforcing, elaborating then the uh, classification of dosha or something like that. This is the broader outlook of what the happens there. And in the same way, wider in the perspective, perspective on nature, developing the trilogy that is Visargadana Vikshepam, developing guna perspective, then from biology to tridosha. That means uh, I already mentioned that whatever differences are there in li from uh, living organism from non living organism. So these, all these things will be, and all these differences will be counted in terms of this trilogy, that is Visargada and Vikshe. For example, reproduction is a difference, a difference of living organism from non-living organism. Where you can play, place re reproduction. So there is a Visarga in reproduction, there is an Adana in uh, reproduction, there is a Vikshepa in reproduction. Digestion is the difference between living and non-living organism. Living organism have metabolism. So where, where you can place the, the, uh, means uh, this uh, trilogy there. So digestion will be having, definitely there will be a uh, Visarga phase. There's definitely there will be an Adana phase. There definitely there will be a Vikshepa. So all the differences of living organism from non-living organism can be understood in terms of three. So that is from biology to Tridosha. So after understanding this, three things, then only we are moving on to name those things like uh, Vata is there. Vata means uh, Vagati Gandhaneyo, something like that. We are not compromising something, slokas, we are not compromising slokas. We are not compromising etymology or nirukti, or we are not uh, compromising the linguistic aspect also. We are not compromising with anything, but from where they have, they have to start is the new beginning. Okay. We will uh, see some uh, how to learn slokas and all after, after these slides. So connecting Guna with Tridosha, then Tridosha and personality, finally further ideas like uh, locations, types and all. So this is the sequence of that. Of that. So in, in this sequence, we have made 10 uh, units 
like uh, unit one will be wider in this perspective. Man as an epitome of the universe will be the unit two. Unit three will be introducing uh, guna spectrum. Unit four will be building the dosha approach to life. Five will be gunas uh, to from gunas to doshas. There it uh, comes as a dosha. Okay. Then comes the tridosha basis of personality that is prakruti. Normal fluctuations and the fluctuations of tridosha. Structural basis of that is the location. Disturbance of those. So this is the sequence. So wider from starting from widening the perspective, we are moving on to further and further additional information about the dosha uh, uh, It is uh, by this process, as I already mentioned, they are not learning tridosha only. They are learning how to view the universe, how to view human being, how to view almost all the variables which, uh, to which um, humans are exposed. So in, in that way, even though the syllabus is a tridosha learning, but by learning tridosha, they will be touching to the heart of Ayurveda, heart of the methodology, heart of the perspective in which Ayurveda thinks. That means the language of Ayurveda. So with the simple theory of dosha you can teach them the language of ayurveda but you have to follow this process that is more important i took 15 classes for this this one. Uh, then uh, these are some examples so unit one there will be uh, means so the teaching strategies will be activity oriented learning it is not a lecture type of learning i will give some examples for that discussions will be there brainstorming will be there Puzzles will be there, case simulations will be there, case presentations will be there, then um, uh, games will be there, sport quizzing. So, so uh, almost uh, I think uh, these, these much of activities were there in the class. Learners have their own capacity to construct new ideas uh, out of their experience. Interactive students did activity oriented learning, lecture discussion, group discussion, brainstorming, role play, so many methods. These, all these methods are very relevant in the present curriculum because in the new syllabus, especially it started in the first year, it is going to the new syllabus is going to come in the next week or this week only for the second profession uh, itself, uh, for, for second professional. Uh, all those things are activity oriented. Non-lecture things are more than lecture things. <laughs> so this much activities we have already done. I will go to some examples. So I will be concluding in 10 minutes. To go to some examples. For example, this is the unit two of my model. So uh, the name of the model, the unit will be man as an epitome of the nature. We start from nature. So there will be some uh, learning objectives there. There will be some notes to instructor and details of the class will be there. All those things are there. And we start with the discussion. Discussion means uh, uh, instructor starts the class with a statement that man is an epitome of universe. So that is the point of this. How they understand what is meant by man as an epitome of universe. So there will be a discussion in the class. They can spell out some examples, whatever they learn. That is why we already mentioned that the learning strategy should be from known to unknown. So whatever they know about uh, the statement like man is epitome of universe, man is the unit of universe. They will be saying outside water is there, so inside water is there. Outside these things are there. So many things. So we will be probing them. Like uh, tell as many examples as they can. So phosphorus is there outside. Phosphorus is inside. So they will be starting. Calcium is there outside. Calcium is there inside. So that is the actual spirit of Loka Purusha Samya. It is not something like Brahmi Vibhudir Loge or something like that. It is a whatever there exists. There is no new thing in human body. Whatever is not there outside. So anything in human body, actually that is there outside. So without telling about uh, Loka Purusha Samyam, we can convince them about Loka Purusha Samyam. The terminology uh, need not be introduced there, but they can learn this terminology later on in Padartha Vidyanam. They, they won't uh, uh, feel any difficulty in uh, identifying Loka Purusha Samyam as a theory of fire. So that was the method. The discussion was there and brainstorming was there. Lecture discussion was there and some activities were there, some examples, uh, some glass of water examples, activities were there. In, in between, they learned some, some slogans. And in human trial, for example, activity five was a discussion about a trilogy in human body. We gave some 20 terms like birth, degeneration, uh, utilization, excretion, and all. So from these 20 terms, they have to classify them into Visargam, Adhanam, and Vikshepa. 
So whenever they learn about trilogy, that is this Visarga Adana Vikshepa, anything happening in their body, they can identify into three groups. So sometimes we need to guide them. Sometimes we need to guide them. Some, sometimes they'll be wrong. Sometimes there will be some confusions. That There only you have to uh, intervene. Let them think freely. And whenever there comes a confusion or some um, uh, uh, I, uh, means uh, uh, lack of ideas or something like that, you can guide them. So that was the, this is the this is the method in which uh, we introduced these topics. So likewise, ten units were there, and finally there will be some assessments. And these are some uh, some pictures. For example, guna spectrum. How can you introduce guna to them? So already they will be introduced with the terminology of guna. That is, there is a guna called ruksha. There is a guna called Luk or something like that. Opposite binaries are. There. For example, Ushna, Snigdha, and Rupsha are there. So that the word meaning will be uh, introduced initially. And then we will introduce some pictures to them. They have to identify this guna in the pictures, in the given pictures. Okay. So Snigdha and Rupsha, they can uh, they will give some pictures and they have to identify which is Snigdha and which is Rupsha. We are not, not going to define these terms precisely not defining terms, but they can, whether they can identify things in terms of Siddha and Ruksha. Whether they can, for example, if you want to introduce Sita and Ushna, you just give them two, two food materials, like a, a pepper, chili, chili pepper you can give, on the other side you can give a glass of milk. So they have to identify which is Sita and which is Ushna. With their own logic, they will be identified. They cannot explain them. Definitely they... they they are not expected that it should be explained by them, but whether they can identify them. So that means uh, they will be identifying things in, in terms of uh, gunas. So likewise, we introduced the 20 gunas, all the gunas with some pictures, and told them next class they have to come with the different variables. That can be the natural variations, uh, seasonal variations. So whether the seasons can be, the uh, four season or six seasons are there, whether they can identify some gunas in season. So whether they can identify some gunas in the kitchen or in the this one, uh, uh, food materials, whether they can identify some gunas in some physiological process. For example, sweating is there. What can be the guna there? Something like that. So multiple examples will be given. At the end of the day, they will be uh, start, they start, they will be starting to think in the language of guna. That much examples we can give. These are some examples for those examples. Okay, I'm not going into much detail. So, so there will be uh, some group discussion in the class. So after uh, uh, introducing Guna, there will be some quiz like uh, activities will be there. They will be, uh, uh, for example, I will be telling them that uh, while while coming in the desk class, bring some guna, bring materials which are having a snigdha Guna, which are having snigdha Guna. Or show snigdha in your body. Show snigdha property in your body. So or show show ruksha property in your body. But wherever is ruksha. So all those things. For example, I will be telling some examples like uh, constipation is there. So which property can be responsible for constipation? So they will be they, it will be in a, it will be uh, like a homework and they will be thinking and uh, what happens in constipation and there will be some dryness of the fecal matter and there will be some uh, block block there, something something like that. So in the next day, they will be coming with an answer that uh, some uh, see the Ruksha properties. Are, whenever uh, they are already uh, familiar with those gunas, so see the Ruksha properties will be there. So then some clinical examples will be given. So there is an uh, osteo osteoarthritis is there. So joint, uh, some synovial fluid is losing. So what is the guna response? So, so many. So this will be examples only. We are not going to explain them. Let them feel themselves that the gunas are there. Okay. That is the method of constructivist learning. They are constructing with examples. We are examples, example providers only. We are providing some examples. Or we are uh, um, guiding them to, expo to expose something. We expose uh, something, uh, some stories, some clinical conditions or some, some materials. And they themselves have to identify what happens with the minimum help from the teacher. So in that way, uh, many activities were there. I think uh, that model contains almost 40, 45 types of activities. Card games were there. 
brainstorming is there. I'm not go going to the, I need a two or three hours to explain each and everything. So I'm not going into the details. Uh, Prakriti concept were uh, uh, done in uh, uh, like a role play. Video listening were there. Like differentiating uh, Vada Pitta Kapha in animal behavior. Peer interaction were there. And some constructionist practices. That means they themselves has to construct a, a Prakriti assessment performer by themselves. Then tabulations will be there, are there. And regarding slogan learning, by now you will be having some um, confusion, some doubts that uh, whether it is a compromising slogan learning, because slogan learning is the heart of our learning process. So whether it is like, it's not like that. Usually what happens is we start from sloga and give the meaning. But here what happens is they will be starting from the meaning and they will be creating sloga. That is the reverse order. So three methods were there. Some slogas we need to explain. Start from sloga. Some slogas cannot be created, but some other slogas we can create. I will tell one example. For example, uh, this is called a graded table method. Graded table method means we give them some terms. Ulsaha, Pakti, Cheshta, Vega, Pravartanam, Sauryam, Sthiratvam, Trishna. Because it, is, it happens at a, it is, it is not a preliminary stage, but at, uh, after six or seven months, they will be somewhat stable with Sanskrit. So at that time only we can uh, introduce this one. So terms are given there. So for example, Ulsaham is there. So while, while uh, listening this term, while primarily by hearing Ulsaha, whether they get uh, which dosha is there. So Ulsaham is there. They have to think Ulsaham is there. So which dosha will be responsible for that? Whether it is Vada, whether it is Pitta, whether it is Kapha. So they can mark it there. Then we are going to ex, uh, tell the meaning of Ulsaha. Sometimes what happens is Ulsaha, uh, some, some, somebody may not be getting the real meaning of Ulsaha. So we are, we will be giving a meaning like enthusiasm is Ulsaha. So whether at that, that point they are able to identify the dosha behind Ulsaha. So that is the second grade. Third grade is we will be explaining what is meant by Ulsaha. Ulsaha means, so we will be giving some examples of Ulsaha. That is explanation of, that is not mere meaning, that is explanation of Ulsa. So whether they are able to be capable, uh, becoming capable to identify the dosha behind Ulsaham at that stage. So three stages are there. One is the mere terminology. Second one is the simple meaning. Third one is explanation. At which state students are able to identify the dosha behind them. <clears throat> so that is called a graded table method. This is very, for them it will be very easy to identify. So finally all the terms will be identified and we will make the sloka taking all these terms. Ulsaha, Uchwasa, Nishwasa, Jeshta. So all the terms already they know the meaning of terms by their experience, by their logic and then coming to the sloka. So this is happening uh, in the graded table. So uh, what I meant to say is it is not a compromising something or uh, the some spirit of the sloka. So likewise we have introduced some dosha karma and uh, dosha vridhi shaya lakshana and open textbook activities were there. Concept mapping were there, like a division of vada, we introduced in a concept mapping things. Instruction and analogy were, were there, like uh, explaining with some examples, like uh, uh, upamana is there, no? upamana. So in textbook itself, there are some examples. For example, explaining vishaya neva, vishaya krime in the case of uh, prakriti, ashtanga hridaya. So that is one analogy. Likewise, you can make your own analogies. For example, I will tell a simple example. Like uh, uh, there is a, a geometry box approach. Geometry box approach means, uh, for example, you will tell a story like a kid was there. A seventh, he was studying in a seventh standard. He was having a geometry box. There are uh, five or six, <coughs> five or six instruments in the geometry box. The student is not at all using all the instruments in all the classes. Okay, in mathematics class, you, he may be needing uh, some scales, protractor or something like that. In physics class, uh, there will be use of pencil, rubber or something like that. Chemistry class also, there is no much use, but some pencil, pen, rubber and all they are used. Mathematics class also they are using. So all the classes, there will be some use of these uh, uh, instruments, but all the classes, uh, there is no need of all the instruments. Likewise, Vata is having six qualities, gunas, 
all the time all the gunas are not uh, used proper sometimes it will be chala normally what happens is in the normal class the student uh, always almost always he will be using normally normally always always he, he will be using pen because all the class it will be needed likewise vada almost always it will be chala but abnormally when the student become naughty he will be using uh, means combus instead of pen that means in dosha vaishamyam the chala property will will be subdued and juksha property will be overrun likewise there is a this is a simple example for explaining what are the role of gunas uh, in doshas so likewise you can develop some newer type of analogies to explain some principles so that is called instructional analogy this this area instructional analogy is a very important area in uh, teaching methodology nowadays it is very becoming very important because analogical explanations will convince the matter easily to the students so such approaches are there simulation games were there games in the class some activities and all case based learning that uh, and uh, some as a summative assessment unit test all those things were there so the what means is uh some spot quizzing was there like for example like amoeba capturing food so we will be telling we will be so they know this thing so whether senses the presence of prey outside is the first step so what is the dosha responsible there so they know vadam uh, by that time they will be vadam vagadi gandhanayoh the sensory activity and motor activity they they correlate with them so moves towards the prey that is the second phase what is the dosha responsible there formation of pseudopodium what is the dosha there enzymatic activity what is the dosha there assimilation what is the dosha there so this uh, with the with the one process they can identify different doshas so with this they are convinced about almost all the activities all the doshas participate there is not a single activity with only one dosha for example respiration is there respiration all the doshas are participating in one way or other that is very easy to convince them that uh, everything is composed of dosha that will be very easy your mechanism to reach that all the rogas are dosha are having dosha that is very, uh, when they get this idea they it is very easy to convince them uh, those uh, in the case of roga also it is like that all the rogas will be having different combination of doshas something like that. so indirectly they are getting some directly we are proposing something but indirectly they are getting some so what is proposed what is directly dealt in the class will be added with what what they learn themselves maybe in the class maybe outside the class maybe during the discussion and all so all those things happens likewise spot quiz were there these are some examples so <clears throat> i'm concluding my session with this model with this new model i Propose for a beginner learner admitted to BIMS during first three months. This model is for first three months. We can make other models which are clinically oriented. As I already mentioned, it is a preclinical thing. So clinically oriented thing, it is very easy to come out with the clinical oriented thing. Directly, it is very difficult to convince them about clinically them about the three doses directly because they are not exposed to the clinical setting. So for clinical learning, this can be taken. I, I, another model can be developed for a clinical setting so constructivist approach is adopted here it is already i i think you are convinced about that because constructivism is the model there transition model so from learning tridosha only they are transited from their previous learning premises to the new one okay because they have changed their perspective they have uh, made a language uh, learned a language of guna spectrum and all widening the perspective occurs piaget's cognitive theory that assimilation accommodation that is applied that is interactive participatory process oriented activity new techniques incorporated scopes of reflective practice they themselves can reflect the things and having uh, some new ideas role of new media tridosha after guna all those things are um, incorporated in a single instance of tridosha that means in that way tridosha becomes the hallmark of ayurveda ayurvedic learning if you can uh, imbibe these ideas for tridosha learning so you can uh, make them easy transition from their previous experience 
almost all the theoretical concept like log of the sum and sum and division everything can be uh, incorporated without knowing without we are not uh, telling them that uh, this is sum and division siddhanta but they are convinced indirectly they are becoming convinced about the importance of sum and division siddhanta we are not teaching them something like that so the, the, it will be very easy to learn then onwards it is very easy to learn padartha vidyan then onwards it will be very easy to learn kriya sharira or even anatomy rajana rajana sharira also will be very easy to learn so my proposal is you teach tridosha siddhanta for the first one month and in this in this way you teach tridosha siddhanta that will be beginning for anything in ayurveda that will be the beginning of kriya sharira that will be a beginning of padartha vidyana everything you can teach them directly so that is the beauty of tridosha siddhanta because it encompasses it, it includes almost every theoretical construct applicable in ayurveda so that is the importance of tridosha siddhanta so that is practically it is done and it is found that uh, such but practic, practical difficulty is there i have done it practically i have tested this in a, in a batch of students and uh, i got uh, very good uh, uh, performance from them but practically it becomes difficult because this much detailing in the present curriculum will be difficult so we have to revise the curriculum to include tridosha siddhanta in this way so that is my विनोद सर Can you hear me? Minus sir, can you hear me? Ah uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir. Ah uh, in between sound? was a problem. Ah it was no sound was That's there. Sir, uh, namaste, sir, namaste. Namaste, namaste, namaste sir. 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 Namaste Okay. Before that, was it clear, sir? Before that, it was clear. It was clear. It was okay. Okay. So, and the last thing uh, is uh, about my proposal. Uh, I proposed uh, as a Tridosha in the in the syllabus. Uh, it should be ideal. It will be ideal that Tridosha Siddhanta teach Tridosha Siddhanta in the initial phase in this way. Then uh, it will be very easy to learn other subjects like even Padartha Vidyana or Kriya Sharira or Rajana Sharira something like that. So, as a transition curriculum. when people come to learn ayurveda introduce tridosha in this way this will be a gateway to other subjects that was the idea which i shared in the last 3 3 minutes okay sir thank you thank you sir. so here by you are concluding your presentation yes sir yes sir, sir. Okay, okay 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 thank you dhanyawad sir इतनी वंडरफुल सेशन के लिए अब मैं डॉक्टर बेटसी से रिक्वेस्ट करती हूँ कि वो सेशन की को चेयरमैन और चेयरमैन से हमारा परिचय कराएं डॉक्टर बेटसी थैंक यू डॉक्टर प्रतिभा नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर प्रियदर्शनी मैम 
Dr. Preetashni is currently Director of Agasti Ayurved since last 22 years. She is also a partner of Agasti Agroved, which deals with the cultivation of endangered medical plants. She is also founder, member of Agasti Pharmaceutical Pune. She is having academic experience of more than 16 years. Team Toshpe Charcha, welcome you, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma okay. It's audible. First, I would like to congratulate sir for this <laughs> fantastic and brainstorming session. Uh, actually, it is too difficult to explain his vast experience in this uh, short time period, actually. But uh, it's a pleasure not only to listen, but to learn a lot from sir. So I thank you, Vinod Kumar, sir. Uh, it's a, really a pleasure. Actually, uh, for beginner learner of Ayurveda, uh, whose background is science, that means PCB, it is really very much difficult for them to face all these problems like basic concepts of Ayurveda. But uh, you have given many ideas or many uh, insights for teachers also like me. It is very important for teachers also. Um, basically for teachers. So imbibing some uh, basic ideas in uh, those uh, beginners like assimilation to accommodation or you have given many techniques like uh, preclinical learning of Ayurveda or simple to complex. So these points are very much important for a teacher like me. So sir has give, uh, developed innovative model of teaching and learning of these basic concepts. But I think for teachers, means for all uh, teachers with uh, different subjects, this is very much important to uh, develop models like this. So I thank sir very much. Or such may sir, ye bohut hi, yani ki teachers ke liye, humare jaise teachers ke liye ye ek apne bohut hi ek adarsha se diya hai. But for Ayurveda, there are no such courses there. So, it happens that only after MD, we are directly going for teaching. But if these courses are developed, it is very much important that it will be also important for students. And the students are going to be going to the modern medicine. Because they don't understand the basic concepts. So for them, it is very much important. So I thank you, sir, for this wonderful brainstorming session. And I thank the organizing committee for giving me the, this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Now the session is open for questions. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's audible. Also, want to ask the questions? You can directly ask her, or otherwise, you put in the chat box. Anyway, yes, anyway, to both the ways. Uh, sir, I have one question, sir. Um, like, how can we incorporate this uh, mansika dosha along with this uh, shadikata dosha? Okay, okay. So you you need to. Uh, that means that means the sattva rajas tamas how 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 you want to connect sattva rajas tamas with the dosha that is the question or whether it is the learning in the learning process can you clarify that question that you, you need to uh, explain the concept of asaya apakarsana with the respect to dosha so so what is your question? That is, uh, whether it is, uh, we can connect Tridosha with Triguna. Is that the question? Yes, sir. Okay. So actually, 
there are two things regarding the connection between Tridosha and Triguna. One is Triguna is a bigger concept. Triguna is a bigger concept because it is actually mentioned in Sankhya Darsana. As the, uh, as the attributes of the whole universe, it's not a simple thing like uh, whether it apply, applies to a human body or human mind or something like that. But it is a, it's, a, it's a thing which happens in the whole universe. And uh, from uh, in the Sankhya Darsana, it is explained Triguna is uh, finally converted to Panjaputa and uh, Vadapitta Gapha are uh, derivatives of Panjaputa. In that way, Trigunas are connected with Tridosha. But the problem is, uh, while you convert, for example, uh, in, in uh, Susruta Samhita, it is well mentioned that uh, uh, Triguna, that Sattvam is, uh, uh, means Akasha is uh, Sattvigam. Vayu is, uh, um, that means uh, Rajasam or something like that. Uh, some, some descriptions are there. So the, there will be a doubt, something like, the, like whether Vada is Sattvigam or not. Or Kapha is Tamasam, because Kapha is composed of Prithvi Jala, so whether Kapha is Tamasam or not. That is a common doubt, uh, because uh, uh, Kapha is uh, Prithvi Jala predominant. So the, is there a chance that uh, Tamasa is predominantly associated with the Kapha or something like that? In that, uh, Sattva, Rajas, Tamas are having their own good things because Tamas, for example, Chama is there for Kapha. It is a good quality. It is a good quality. But for becoming Chama, there should be the, uh, the movement the, because our thought process should be very slow, optimally slow. Slowness should be there. So that Tamasa property is contributing to the positive attribute of Kapha because Kapha becomes very slow in action and thoughtful in action. Thoughtful. So that property is comparable with the Kapha. Tamas is having both good qualities and bad qualities. Even Sattva also is having good qualities and bad qualities. Sattva is always uh, positive. Okay. But Sattva cannot act alone. The, the limitation of Sattva is Sattva cannot act alone. It, it needs the help of uh, Rajas to act. In that way, Triguna themselves are having some positive attributes and negative attributes. And in the case of Kapha, uh, the positive attribute of uh, uh, Tamas is acting there, becoming sthira, char, uh, chama, uh, the slowness in the movement, thoughtful activities or something like that. But when Tamas is beyond the limit, that means Kapha is beyond the limit, that chama or that movement mobility, that stability will be unhealthy. So the problem is to which quantity uh, uh, tamas is there in your body, even though it is it is a positive attribute when it is in a limited sense. When when it comes under normal situations, it is a positive attribute. But when it goes beyond, it becomes negative. Kapha also is like that. In a normal condition, it is very positive, but going beyond, it is negative. So there is no problem in connecting tamas with kapha because tamas also is having positive attributes. Kapha also is having positive attribute. The positive attribute of Tama, that is Shama or stability or something like that, that gives the healthy Kapha, that gives rise to healthy Kapha and vice versa. When Tamas uh, having the stability is more, slowness is more or Saitya is mm -hmm. more, then yeah. what happens mm -hmm. is that uh, is uh, contributing to the unhealthy uh, things or yeah. disease or something like that. So in that way, you need not correlate all the attributes of tamas with all the attributes of kapha. There are some positive attributes of tamas which contributes to kapha. There are some uh, positive attributes of uh, um, rajas which contributes to vada. There are some pos positive attributes of rajas which contributes to pitta. In that way, you have to correlate. You don't correlate something like uh, uh, tamas kapha is equal to tamas or vada is equal to sattam or something like that. If the understanding is uh, somewhat, you bring out some more bigger uh, means ideas or extended ideas, wider ideas about uh, Tridosha and Triguna, it, uh, you can correlate all those things because there will be some qualities of Sattva in Vada because they are 
some qualities of sattva is there because vata is lighter. Sattva is lighter. Okay. Uh, rajas, uh, pitta, agni is rajas. Agni uh, bhuta is rajas. So pitta will be having some uh, rajas property. No doubt they are having some attachment. They are over attached with the things. So you take triguna on one side and compare whichever qualities are there. They can be compared to vada, pitta and kapha equally. Not one-to-one -one correlation. That is, sattva is equal to vada or kapha is equal to tamas or something like that. You don't go for that. Because these two things are entirely different things. The vada, pitta, kapha is there on one side and sattva is tamas uh, on the other side. You take the attributes of Satvarajas Tamas and apply to Vadapita and Kapha, not equate them. So in that way, we can identify the uh, role of Satvarajas Tamas in Tridosha. That will be an ideal way to understand the relationship between uh, Tridosha and Triguna. Thank you, sir. I hope that is sir, clear. There is one more question. Is there? Sir, can you please explain the concept of Ashi Abhakrishna with re respect to Dosha? Uh, this is this is another area. Asya Pakarsana uh, is a, a later idea. It is not a, uh, in Charaka Samhita also it is there while uh, uh, explaining the, the, the combination of doshas. Asya Pakarsana is, a, is a taking something from its own location to some other places. That is the simplest explanation of Asya Pakarsana. It happens in many diseases. So uh, I think this is uh, another area of uh, Tridosha. That uh, simple explanation, I am not going to the details. Come to the uh, topic. So in this topic, uh, Asya Bhagavan is another topic. How can we transition the students from 12th to our science without them thinking that this is something uh, out of their previous syllabus? Like, for example, whatever they learned for past 12 years is not a waste. Especially when modern physics, chemistry, biology, yes, it is very important. That is why the, uh, we start from some assimilation process. It is not waste. For example, if you can understand biology in terms of Tridosha, if you can understand biology in terms of Tridosha, that means biology is not irrelevant. You take the ideas of biology and understand it in the language of Tridosha, that means biology is not outdated, biology is not unwanted, bi biology is not uh, uh, irrelevant. So you can, you can uh, take those knowledge to the language of Ayurveda, to the language of Ayurveda. Not all the things you can, especially biology, we need biology for that. Not uh, all, always it need not be physics and chemistry. Biology is the most important thing happening there. So we can take those ideas to Ayurveda also. Thinking uh, in the language of Tridosha and identifying things in biology, not vice versa. Learning biology and thinking in the language of biology about Tridosha, it is not happening here. It is not the ideal way. Think, learning biology and thinking in the language of Tridosha will be, it is not vice versa. Okay, it can be, it can be. Many of the things can be explained. Sir, sir, one, sir, you know, sir, Hello. yes, sir. Hello. Uh, Hello. It's a wonderful question, sir. I mean, wonderful session. Uh, Hello, you are, sir. Uh, our topic was learning technology. You have Hello. given teaching technology in a nice way, in a better way. It was so nice. And uh, one more question, one question I want to Hello. ask is, Hello. Uh, as you told, sir, I think somebody else also is there trying. Try, try. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, hello. Uh, so, you told, sir, you are having the opinion that first let us go to the uh, practical things, I mean, the basic practical, like that IDT things, things, all those things. But uh, 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 what yeah. I feel, some yeah. lectures like Mirsna. <laughs> Uh, such things are quite difficult to identify, it seems. Is there any technology? Yes, sir, yes, sir. That means those yes, sir, very I difficult agree, agree. Things, things, how we can, first whether we should go for a theoretical, just a theoretical for most difficult words, some theoretical classes, then go for practicals, then again coming back to theory. Is it possible? 
because you have gone through all these areas it seems so this is my doubt please clear sir uh, here also it happens sir for example introducing guna by terminology that is something like a theoretical part of that thing we, we i i didn't tell de that portion here uh, in detail uh introducing guna we need to stick on to some terminology directly introducing some terminology some giving some meanings and all that is something like a theoretic explanation then we go to identify gunas and all then coming back to sloka then again go to the doshas and then coming back to sloka i think uh, that that needs sir uh, that theoretic explanation we cannot avoid didactic lecture we cannot avoid lecture method sometimes it should be there sir it should be there so blending is important blending with the theoretical explanation with the practical things will be uh, important but while a, a student comes to a new thing new syllabus new subject let us start from where where they are let us start from where they are what what they know or something like that that is a process of assimilation uh, that is a process of assimilation and uh, finally we need to uh, reach into this stage of accommodation that was what i trying to convince you start from assimilation and finally you need to reach to accommodation but accommodation is a must so whatever uh, gauri shankar sir was telling is correct you need to blend the theoretical portion and practical uh, almost equally giving importance to practical things that is right thank sir. thank you sir thank you sir thanks rajiv sir was asking something sir good evening sir good evening sir i am audible sir Yes, yes, yes. I am audible. Yes, 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 sir. Yes. There is a concept in Vartha Vyaji Prakarana regarding Avarana. In Vartha Vyaji, Avarana and Avrutta Vartha is uh, explained in uh, Samhita. So when we call that Vartha is a Chalaguna. Chalaguna means mobility. When Vartha is mobile and Chalaguna uh, and mobility is there, then how can they they stack up? and they do avarana to each other prana avrutta vata apana avrutta prana like that they have explained so when every vata all vata is chalaguna mobile is there mobility is there then how they stack up and uh, make the avarana to other vata two things are there uh, one is the avarana of paraspara avarana of uh, uh, the vata that is prana avrutta udana prana avrutta those things are uh, i think that is a uh, a separate entity while compared to the uh, avarana of pitta or kapha that is one idea second second idea second thing is so we need not uh, uh, explain the avarana term always there uh, is a block with the case of kapha and pitta or with the case of rakta purisha everything there is murtatvam is there there we can explain uh, uh, the avarana with the uh, the concept of uh, block cage or stagnation or something like that but in uh, paraspara avarana we need not worry about that there is some interaction so avarana does not always mean block there is some interaction between them so better in such instances better go to the symptomatology uh, instead of uh, thinking about what happens there we have to think about what is the outcome so you go to symptomatology better go to symptomatology otherwise it, is, it will be very difficult to explain as you uh, rightly said so better go to the symptomatology there uh, than making a, a very gross idea about some blocking there some blocking mechanism stagnation or something like that so we have to consider these the, the two things uh, in different ways i think there are some interaction there are some interaction between these two types of uh, two types of vada that happens in paraspara avarana of vata that will be a better um, way in which we can think about this type of avaranas this is my opinion thank you sir थैंक यू सर अब मैं इस सेशन की चेयरमैन डॉक्टर विभू खन्ना मैम को इनवाइट करूंगी वो प्लीज सेशन ज्वाइन करें
Yes, ma'am. Bipu Khanna, Assistant Professor, Department of Kriya Sharira. Dayanand Ayurveda College, Jalandhar. She is pursuing PhD from lovely University Punjab. She has teaching experience of 15 years. Nan has recently published a book on practical Kriya Shari. She has published multiple research papers and book chapters on various topics related to Ayurveda. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the introduction. First of all, I li I'd like to congratulate, sir, for the beautiful explanation given by you, sir. Congratulations, Vinod, sir. And actually, we got to learn a new model for the students entering the BMS from 12th standard to the BMS. Sir, it is very well said by you that when the students learn, the, come to the Ayurvedana, this is naturally a different science for them, a different language for them. So, sir, started with the Paget's theory of the cognitive learning. We, we, we learn to start with the assimilation process and then go towards the accommodation process. So the induction to the deduction process. So the preclinical learning is very important and beautifully described by Sir, the preclinical learning that first learn in the nature and then in the human body and then to the patients. So thank you, Sir, for giving our teachers. Actually, uh, this session is very good for the teachers to learn the practical approach, how to make the students learn the Tridoshas. So the, as said by Sir, the learning is good via transition, transition process from the known to the unknown. So give the students the examples, apply them to the classrooms, apply the examples in the classrooms, in the family, in the place where they live, and then let them go from the known towards the unknown. So then, the person, the, what the students know, ask them the questions and then ident let them identify it and then come to terminology of the Ayurveda and let them identify the terminology of the Ayurveda. So I think it is a good way, uh, it is the best way, sir, said by you. And sir gave a very beautiful teaching methodology, and which is very interesting to learn by the Padartha aspect, by the Ayurgenomics aspect, binary aspect, a deadly process, the symbolic learning. Uh, really, um, it was very good to learn, sir. Then the dosha is learned, it occupies all the theories in a single theory. So if we give the base to the students by the Panchamahabhutas, Lok Samaya, Purusha, Karya Karan Siddhanta, Samanya Vishesh Siddhanta, the dosha then after learned, after these all theories, it occupies all theories in the one theory. The next part of the learning was the structuring the learning process. So actually very, it's, it's as said by sir, it's actually not a different science, it's a different paradigm. The different paradigm means it is a different thought process which need to be learned. So uh, we actually, we used to compare the dosha with the Prakriti aspect. But actually, apart from Prakriti, the language of guna is a very appropriate language as said by sir. Even in Ashtangrida also, the gunas are mentioned first. So it's self-explanatory for that thing. Then the structural approach given by Sir was to changing the perspective. First thought to change the perspective. Then the guna perspective, the tidosha perspective, and then correlate the tidosha with the guna. So in the last part of session, the Sir gave very interesting brainstorming activities, role play, gunas, the game set by Sir, the video lessons, the quiz, the discussion session in the class, the activities shown by Sir was very interesting to learn. So if in the starting three months we adapt this new model, so it will be a directly uh, a good explanation for the students to learn this thought process. So like a uh, beautiful example given by Sir, I actually enjoyed that example in which Sir told that man is an epitome of universe, just plot a question on them and then ask them to spell out the many of the examples regarding that. So without telling them the Lok Samaya Purusha Siddhanta, ask them to explain the, ask them to correlate themselves and then come to this Siddhanta. Similarly, the analogy process, the Snigda Guna explain, ask them to bring the things with the Snigda process, Snigda Gunas, and then tell them what is the role of Snigda with the Tridosha and the Gunas. So everything was very appropriate, sir, and very well said by you. The Tridosha concept is a gateway to other subjects in the Ayurveda. So if we learn Tridosha, we learn Rachna Shari, Kriya Shari, Samita, Siddhanta, everything is occupied and learned in itself. So blending is very important. 
that learn the theoretical part and then apply to the practical part. So actually there is a need to shift the paradigm, our thought process, so that Ayurveda displaces a position whenever we think of the Ayurveda, the always the students, the teachers, they try to compare with the modern science. Actually, it's not a comparative science. It's a different science in itself. So this process of the unique learning and a new thought process, if it adapted by the teachers, it's definitely give it give the Ayurveda, which is actually a unique science. It will give the Ayurveda its actual place of the unique science in the Ayurveda in, the, in this uh, universe. And then additional to the great contribution made by NCSM, I would like to add this thing that activities shown by Sir was very interesting and the teachers need to learn them in detail so that they can explore their own thought process. So definitely some refresher courses can be started from the NCSM, NCSM team for the teachers, for the clarity of the concepts towards this Ayurveda. It means clarity of the concepts means they can, for the clarity of the thought process, how to learn Ayurveda to the practical approach, how to make learn students Ayurveda to the practical approach. So uh, learning biology and thinking the concepts of the Tridosha with that. So this will give a vision to explore, the, sir has given a vision to explore the gunas with day-to-day -day experiences. Beautifully describes, sir, the idli making process, the wheat making process, the chapati making process. It's definitely marvelous to hear from you all these. Actually, we have read all this in the NCSM curriculum, but it was actually very beautiful to listen from your side, these all things. So I'm really thankful for the organizing committee, for giving to the organizing committee, for giving me opportunity to join this talk. And once again, thank you, sirs, and congratulations for this beautiful session. Yeah. Uh, Vinod, sir, thank one you, more man. question is yes. there. Yes, yes. Vinod, sir, one more question oh, sir. from my side. Yes, sir. Yes. It is just like a uh, pre-Ayurveda course. I think uh, I know that you are also there uh, for formulating all those questions. MCSM has put forth that uh, proposal also. It is given for the public opinion. So can you comment or can you uh, advise the committee or uh, can you give some suggestions to those people? Those who are ready to introduce this pre Ayurveda or bridging course, something like a bridging course. Uh, uh, all what you have advised or the steps you have uh, advised, whether that can be uh, advisable for the new curriculum, which is proposed by the NCAS. I know that you are also the brain behind that, but I am asking to clarify that once again. I am asking the same question. Uh, sir, it is under under pipeline. I am not uh, actually. I am not a uh, uh, part of that one. Uh, I was a part of uh, uh, some other activities in NCAS, but not in this one. So I I need to. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a very difficult to uh, answer that question at this point of time. I, I need to go because some proposals are there. Draft has already come. Uh, one thing is there uh, in experience. Uh, it was there uh, as sir sir was there in. Uh, uh, AVP, uh, Ayurveda Pharmacy, that uh, Coimbatore Ayurveda College, it was there, that idea. Uh, in my experience, uh, uh, one who, uh, I don't know all the batches who come out through, through this process there, but um, uh, many of the uh, uh, practitioners, many of the practitioners are uh, excelling uh, while coming through such a, such a process, but there are some, some apprehensions regarding uh, what will be the fate of the other people who don't uh, approach this program because it is optional? And what will be the quality of other subjects there? Like uh, in this program, they, are, they need to learn what is called physics, chemistry, biology, everything. So how, how can they blend? And what will be the, uh, after two years, what will be their standard in both the subjects? Means compared to... We are, uh, our, as, a, as a medical fraternity, we... What will be the standard of these uh, uh, things happening there? So there are so many apprehensions there. Are so I, at this point of time, I, it is very difficult to uh, comment on that. But in experience, I feel that uh, the products uh, who were there in the um, uh, Coimbatore Ayurveda College who followed this style of education. So 
up till my knowledge up to my knowledge uh, there are some excellent products there so i don't know whether it applies to every everywhere in india or something everywhere every batches and not so that is my primary thing there are uh, because i i'm not in a position to comment to, to the whole spirit of that program because i want to i need to go that draft sir I, this this uh, program i am not a part of that uh, thing because i i, I have been there for some other things it is not connected with this one so that is my initial comments thank you sir. thank you sir one more question is there in sir. present day scenario how to explain tridosha without using ayurvedic terminology tridosha means uh, uh, ayurvedic terminology means prakriti ayurvedic terminology means uh, the term of pada pitta or kapha yes sir okay you can you can say that uh, uh, types of personalities are there and what is the problem in introducing vada pitta and kapha there this it is just a names no vada pitta kapha these are there and uh, the properties of vada pitta and kapha are, are reflecting as the uh, uh, nature of this this personalities what is the difficulty there in naming the vada pitta and kapha is there any difficulty because once they are aware once they are acquainted with familiar with the vata pitta and kapha there is no difficulty in naming them as vata prakriti pitta prakriti and kapha prakriti as they even in uh, when we are teaching prakriti to other uh, streams like we are uh, taking classes on prakriti to school children and even colleges that is a uh, arts colleges that is a science subjects and all we initially introduce that there are three things the name of those three things are vata pitta and kapha we need not go for the uh, word meaning or something like that xyz is there so likewise vada pitta kapha is there but vada is mostly responsible for the uh, mobility factor so that is important that is the idea they they want to get uh, while learning vada all the other things mobility means uh, 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 fluctuations are there okay lack of stability is there when mobility is there your body will become um, easily fatigued tired or your body is not you are uh, all the things are having mobility your speech is having mobility means hypermobile your behavior is hypermobile so all the points uh, coincide with the idea of mobility so there is a mobilizing factor whether you have to call it as vata or not is a different thing you can you can just uh, make it as a m factor mobility factor that is only thing a uh, uh, metabolism factor or m factor or other m o factor or something like that there is no there is no problem in naming all these things it's only names so you don't worry about need not worry about uh, without telling or with telling without explaining them as vada or with explaining them as vada these all are names no but in our case where the problem is those names are carrying some specific meanings that is the thing so for for whoever is there learning ayurveda you can directly introduce the term vada pitta and kapham and even people outside also you can introduce vada pitta and kapham no doubt so there is no problem of having confusion regarding uh, telling names but the other things that is ruksha sita all those things you can just translate it no problem you can you can make them convinced about them you can use the term dryness or something like that if the people are not belonging to ayurvedic fraternity but in you definitely you want to translate dryness as ruksha later on in ayurveda classes so you have to directly tell them what is ruksha what is something like that so i think that is not a problem to that is only a problem of language but in the initial phase in the language so i think that is not a, a big problem dealing with the prakriti Uh, can prakriti changes according to place or lifestyle is another um, question <laughs> if you if you go to the definition of prakriti that will be nirvigarini dosha sthiti so then will come then will come a, a question like uh, whether a, a vada prakriti person is lean and uh, should it be lean life long whether it is a if it is a part of prakriti if it is a part of prakriti it should it should be life long so i think 
whatever explanations are there regarding prakriti in ashtanga hridayam charaka samhita charaka, charaka samhita it is very clear in ashtanga hridayam you can see some expressions like uh, sometimes you you say that uh, there can be the varna can be liable to change or uh, what is called the complex whenever a, a person is becoming more obese fatty the tone, the color tone of the skin will be somewhat changing but there is not a proper change even a vada prakriti person if he become a, a, a obese that obesity is different from the obesity of a kapha prakriti person because that will be a disproportionate the the the, uh, the the obesity of a vada prakriti vada prakriti will be disproportionate when compared to the obesity of a kapha prakriti okay so even though the, there are uh, some some features of the prakriti are liable to change if you want to describe prakriti as permanent feature some of the features are liable so in, in the prakriti description you can uh, make uh, an adjustment like some of them are modifiable to some extent and some of them are not at all modifiable for example uh, the nature of your hair not at all modifiable nature of your eye eyeballs it is not at all modifiable so those things are not at all modifiable some others are appears to be modifiable like uh, the uh, size of the or uh, akriti you are uh, means uh, st stature of your body but even though uh, as i already mentioned the stature of kapha prakriti even though they are lean will be different from a person who are lean and vada prakriti okay because even though kapha prakriti is there and in kapha prakriti even the even though the person is lean that leanness will be having a structure of kapha prakriti even though it is lean so leanness of kapha prakriti will be different from leanness of vada prakriti obesity of kapha prakriti will be different from obesity of vada prakriti that means even though the structure of a person the uh, construct of a person changes from time to time the changes happening in vada prakriti will be different from the changes happening in kapha prakriti so that much observation should be there regarding this uh, some of the factors it is not all the factors some of the factors uh, that much observation should be there put it to put it simple as i already mentioned obesity of a vada prakriti you can identify it as vada prakriti by observing the disproportionate obesity of that person obesity of a kapha prakriti will be almost proportionate because that stature will be proportionate in the case of kapha prakriti so you can very well identify these two even though they are obese you can very well identify these two in this way uh, the stature of a person that nature will be permanent so to put it simple once again some of them are modifiable you can see some of them are modifiable even though they are modifiable the modification is not in the same pattern for two types of prakritis so that is the explanation for that some of them are you can see some of them modifiable but the pattern of modification will be you can identify the dosha pattern in the modification also that is the point i uh, want to clear make it clear sir chat box me sir chat box me dr abhilash pr sir ka ek question hai Sir, at so at what, age, what way we should consider a person's prakriti to be manifested completely without considering vigriti? Yes, yes um, that that problem is there. Thadu sthiratvam is the uh, is the criteria. Thadu sthiratvam means you can take it young adults. Young adult age is the ideal age for starting assessment of prakriti. But even before that, uh, uh, all the features, maximum features of prakriti will be attained in that phase only. even adolescents also there will be indications of prakritis the prakriti vada prakriti pitta prakriti typical especially the psychological things psychological things uh, it starts from uh, adolescents onwards and some of the factors like skin tone and all it will be starting but all the features will be completely man sir 
हेलो सर आपकी वीडियो पॉज हो गई है प्लीज आप अपना कनेक्शन चेक कीजिए सर आपकी वीडियो और ऑडियो दोनों ही पॉज हो गई है आप प्लीज अपना कनेक्शन चेक करें टेक्निकल इश्यूज की वजह से आ, सर जो है वो डिस्कनेक्ट हो गए हैं इज इट नाउ ओके यस सो व्हाट द क्वेश्चन सर क्वेश्चन वॉज मैनिफेस्टेशन एज कंप्लीट manifestation age of prakriti without consideration uh, no i was uh, explaining that uh, you could not hear so actually you were explaining and in between uh, the connection went wrong uh, okay 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 i i, I just to finalize that uh, um, the prakriti for finalizing the assessment of prakriti it should be thadu sthiratvam something like uh, uh, young adult age uh, after 17 or 18 years but the the features of prakriti start to appear from almost permanent prakriti start to appear from adolescence onwards 13 14 years of onwards practically it is not i'm not dealing with the textual reference and all practically but maximum features appear after the age of 18 years then only you can you can finalize the assessment of prakriti before that also you get some features evolving features of prakriti after adolescence that is what uh, our physiology physiologically we uh, uh, the prakriti lakshana appears start appears during the age of 13 and all but uh, all the almost all the features will appear during the age of 18 to 20 so that will be the ideal age for assessing all the parameters dhanyawad sir uh ab main bhagavata sarni ग्लोकल कॉलेज ऑफ आयुर्वेदिक मेडिकल साइंस के सहारनपुर उत्तर प्रदेश कर्नाटक संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय और डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ संस्कृत स्टडीज स्कूल ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटीज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद की तरफ से डॉक्टर विनोद कुमार एम वी सर को ई सर्टिफिकेट जारी करवाना चाहूंगी थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच धन्यवाद सर इसी के साथ डे सेकंड फोर्थ साइंटिफिक सेशन समाप्त होता है मैं डॉक्टर विनोद कुमार एम वी सर डॉक्टर प्रियादर्शनी बापट पडूस मैडम डॉक्टर विभू खन्ना मैडम का सह हृदय आभार प्रकट करती हूँ जिन्होंने अपना कीमती समय और विचार हम सबके साथ शेयर किए नेक्स्ट सेशन जो है वो कल शाम साढ़े चार बजे से स्टार्ट uh, होगा जिसका टाइटल रहेगा मेटेरियलाइजेशन ऑफ दोषा और साथ में ही अनाउंसमेंट है कि एट uh, अगस्त दैट इज uh, कल यूजी स्टूडेंट्स का पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन कंपटीशन है दोपहर दो बजे से सो uh, so, जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन कंपटीशन में पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं वो प्लीज uh, दोपहर दो बजे जो है वो हमें ज्वाइन करें धन्यवाद शुभ रात्रि